I will reveal my top six scanning tips that you can use to solve Sudoku quicker. Tip number four will probably reduce your solve time the most. Click below if you want to give this puzzle a go. And with that, it's solving time. My first tip, look at the greatest restrictions first. See all these digits in row two. All right, we got a two, three, six, seven, eight, nine. We need a one, four, and a five. I can immediately see that you have a four right here and a five repeated. We're going to be able to solve all three cells because this has to be a one. The four can only go here, and that is a five. I call that my neat naked triple trick. And now it allows us to solve three cells very quickly. The other row that has seven, six digits filled out is down here in row eight. And you see a one, two, three, four, six, nine. We need a five, seven, eight. Well, the seven's right here, and the eight peers into it, the same cell. So we can do a five right there. You know the seven's got to go over here, and this is an eight. Greetings, friend. If you're new to the channel, I welcome you to Smart Hobbies. Subscribe and tap the bell for notifications. If you want to turn your passing interest in Sudoku into a fun and enjoyable hobby, today I am giving you scanning tips. Tip number two is to quickly check the result of a solved cell. Our eyes do this thing called saccadic movements where you kind of go back and forth. So when you're scanning up and down, it only takes milliseconds, but you kind of forget what you looked at when you look in a new spot. Instead, what you want to do is focus on certain areas and use a smooth flow to go to the next spot. So we just solved the seven. And now I can look up and see, hey, there's a seven here and a seven there, and you can solve a seven right there. And now by using these two sevens that we saw and add this one, you can make solve a seven right here and kind of work your way up to solve a seven up here in block two. And since you kind of remember, hey, there's a seven there, and you got these two, work a seven right there, and then I'm working my way back down. So we kind of did this movement to knock out all of the sevens in this puzzle. We just unleashed a ton of hidden singles. And now with our ones, you know, we made a seven right there. You can see that we can solve a one right there pretty easily. And then staying around this area, okay, I see a two with another two. And this two where I finish, you can solve a two right there. Let's move on to tip number three. You want to build on tips one and two. So looking at grace restrictions and Quickly recheck the result of a solved cell. We put a two here. Now we just put a pretty big restriction in column one. You know, right? We have three cells remaining. Whenever you have at least five cells filled out in a house, in this case, column one, you want to see if you can solve the rest. So tip number three is to try to solve more than one cell at a time. And so we got a one, two, four, seven, eight, nine. We need a three, five, six. Using my neat naked triple trick, if you have one of the digits, the six sees two of the cells, and then the other digit, the five, sees one of the same cells, you can solve all three. I know with certainty we can solve this cell without even looking at it because with the six and the five here, this has to be a three. The only place the six will go is up there, and this is going to be your five. And now we're going to move on to tip number four. And I said, this is probably going to reduce your solve time the most. you got to know when to switch from hidden singles to naked singles. The difference here is a hidden single is where you're looking for where a digit can go in a particular house, like we did with the sevens. You know, these sevens, uh, there's only one place in the block where the seven could go. Where a naked single, that's when you're looking to see what digit can go in a particular cell. Now we add this five here. We put some restriction here on row five. And then we have quite a few cells filled out in column four. You also have this additional nine here. That's not either in the column or the row. So what can go here? And that can't be one or two. Can't be a three, four, five. Can't be a six or a seven or a nine. This has to be an eight. So that's a naked single eight. And if you don't know when to switch, you can get caught up looking for hidden singles and doing a lot of wasted scanning. So this is when you a good thing for us. And now we can look down here right below it and go, can we solve a cell right here? You know, it can't be a one, two, three, four, five, 
seven, eight, nine, we can solve this for a naked single six. I cover naked and hidden singles along with the other top Sudoku strategies in my Sudoku solving guide. What this means to you is you can become an expert on over 80% of all the Sudokus you'll ever see. Click on the pinned comment to get it for free and start sharpening your mind now. You want a sharper mind, right? All right, let's look down column four. We have two cells remaining, a two and a nine. I'll fill that out and I'm going to highlight that. We're gonna come back to that here in just a bit. But I want you to remember that this is a two nine and that this is a one four six that's remaining in the block. So from here we went down, but you can also go across. You know, where can a nine be in row five, right? Uh, it can't be here because of this nine. And it cannot be here because of this nine. So we can actually solve for a nine right there. And then we can look up in the block one here. This nine is crucial because you have a nine right here. We need a five, eight, nine to finish block one. Well, as a five right here, looking the same cell as a nine, the nine sees two of these neat naked triple trick. We're gonna solve all three. That's gotta be your eight. Only place the nine goes is right there. And that's gonna be your five, okay. Do you think that uh, tip number four there about naked singles will reduce your solve time the most? Let me know in the comments. I answer every one. I'd love to hear from you. You still got two more tips to go. All right, just like tip number two, now we can put pressure and restriction on block two, right? We just solved the five, nine, eight. Now there's more pressure here and in these digits. We're missing a two three, four, and eight in row one. Well, you see the four and eight right there. So we know the four, eight have to restrict to these two cells. It's called a hidden pair. And I'll highlight those because we're gonna use this for a little bit here. And so knowing the four and eight have to be over here, that means the two and the three have to be in these two cells. Well, I got two right here. I'm gonna pull on up and block two. So that's your two, that's your three. Can we finish the rest of the block? Well, we need a six and a nine. And in my peripheral, I can see there's a nine in block five. So I'm gonna pull it up and put the nine right there and the six right there. And this four, eight hidden pair doesn't allow any other digits in those cells. So we know this is restricted to a two or a three. Well, I got my two right here, very easy to see. I can solve that for two, solve that for a three. And now we're moving on to tip number five. You wanna to link together canon elimination. You wanna create a Chain, okay? I'm gonna show you, just because we saw this two right here, we're gonna be able to solve a two here in block eight. They are linked. And I'm gonna do it using my right angle trick. Very cool. So you have a two here with this two, only place for two in block nine is right there, disambiguating the nine and solving this cell for a two. Okay, so we linked that all together. I solved this and I was able to come down here and solve for two there. If you find value in these solving tips, consider buying me a coffee or just click on the super thanks here on YouTube. I really appreciate it. All right, let's do this right angle trick again. We're gonna be able to solve this cell right here by focusing on block five. Where can a three go here? Well, because of this three and this three, a three has to be right there. And now that's gonna push the four right here in the end of row five. And now we can disambiguate the eight and the four and solve those cells. That's pretty cool. Learn more about this solving combo in this tutorial. Now you should go down column nine. Okay, we only have two digits remaining. We want to build on the tips that I've already taught you, and we don't have to scan anywhere else in the puzzle. We just need to look and see can we solve this three and a six? Well, I'll quickly go over and say, oh, I see a six right there, or maybe you saw a three there. Either way, we'll be able to solve these two because that's your six, and that's going to be your. Three. Now, where can the nine go here in block six? Hopefully, you see this nine is right here covering both of those cells. So we can solve this for a nine very quickly. And then, because we just solved that and bring it down, and we just solved this nine, you can put a nine right there. Now, let's move up to row four. We just put a nine here. It created a nice restriction for us. We're looking for a one, four, eight. Let's try that neat naked triple trick again. This time, you see there's a one and an eight looking at these two cells, and the eight repeated right here. We're gonna be able to solve all three. You got a four right there. The only place the eight goes right there, and this has gotta be your one. Now, the quickest way to solve this cell 
maybe to just go, hey, I have a one here and a one here. That's got to be a one versus looking in the block and figuring out which digit's missing. And also that this has got to be your four now. And now I'm bringing you back to my last tip. Tip number six, it's called use your working memory. Remember what I said, I want you to remember there's a one, four, six right here. Well, now we can use that neat naked triple trick to solve all three cells. Because as soon as you got this four, you should have unlocked in your head, hey, I can now solve the rest of block eight. Because I have a four looking at two of these cells. This one looks at one of the similar cells. That has to be a six. Only place the four goes right there, and this is a one. So I didn't even have to look at all these cells to figure out where the four went. And if you're doing this in writing, like when you do the Sudoku Grand Prix, you have to write out all the your solutions. Do what the world champion, Tan Tan Dai, does. She takes these three digits and she'll write them right below the column, uh, right outside the block, to remind herself. And then she doesn't have to erase them. She can just mark them in when she gets back to that block. Okay, where can we go from here? We see you only have two digits remaining in column three. I'm missing a four and a five. Well, I got a four right here. So there's your four and there's your five. We need a three and a six. I got a six right here. I'm gonna pull it on over from block eight. So there's your six and there's your three. Okay, and three and this three, I'd rather do some cross hatching, get that solved. And then what do I know? Uh, I don't see an eight in row nine. So that's gotta be an eight. Cross hatching on this is gonna be your eight. And I got same digit in the last two blocks. It's gonna be a five right here. And we're gonna end up with a five in block nine. Learn some more amazing Sudoku tips in this next video. Thank you so much for watching.